If my mother tried to attack me, I would not need martial arts to stop her. I'm bigger than her. I could just hug her and stop her because she is small. The art of fighting without fighting? Show me some of it. Hi there, everybody. Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how strength should be factored into your training for self-defense. By far, one of my most popular videos on this channel is one in which I rank various martial arts for self-defense. And in particular, I put wrestling kind of somewhere in the upper middle section. I can't remember exactly where I put it, but I didn't put wrestling in A tier. And my reasoning for not putting wrestling in A tier was that they lacked the submission game and striking game, and they also relied a little bit too much on strength. And one of my viewers by the name of Rudolph was asking why I'm factoring in strength in this way that aren't I kind of, um, I guess, excluding stronger people in my thought process? Like if you're strong, maybe I should do wrestling. The way I understood the comment to be is effectively asking like, hey, if I am a strong person, shouldn't I be factoring that strength in to my self-defense game plan? And to that thought, I would give you a resounding no. One of the founding principles of our school is that if a technique will not work on someone who is larger and stronger than you, then it's just not self-defense. And the reason for this being is statistically, you are far more likely to be attacked by someone who is larger than you than smaller than you. As a general rule, the smaller man doesn't pick fights with the bigger man. People who pick fights are usually going to pick fights because they believe they have an advantage. So either they're going to have a weapon or they're going to be bigger than you. But I think an important distinction to make here is that your strength will still be an advantage. You're just adding it to already effective techniques. So let me take two different takedowns as an example. If I take something like a belly to back suplex, that's a maneuver that you will never do to somebody who like outweighs you by like a hundred pounds. This is a technique that requires you to either be larger or at least the same size as your opponent. And so the second someone outweighs you by enough, it will result in you not being able to do that technique. But then we take another takedown, like the O Sotogari from Judo, the major outside reap. Well, this throw simply involves you getting your opponent off balance and then knocking their legs out from underneath them. There's no amount of lifting required. It's just good timing. And so as a result, a much smaller person can do this to a much larger person. Now here's the interesting part. It's not that Osotogari, it's not that that throw favors the smaller person, it's just that the suplex favors the larger person. So if you are a larger person, your suplex will work, but if you're a smaller person, your suplex won't work. But if you're a smaller person, your outside reap will work, and if you're a bigger person, your outside reap will work better. And that's kind of the idea. It's not that your size and strength advantages should not be used in an actual fight. They just shouldn't be trained as your primary tool. If your goal to winning a fight is to be bigger than your opponent, it's a pretty silly goal. Because at that point, all I have to do to beat you is be bigger than you. There are weight classes in wrestling for a reason. There is weight classes in jujitsu tournaments for a reason. There is weight classes in combat sports for a reason, and it's because it is considerably easier for a larger person to beat a smaller person. And so if you are relying on being bigger than them, and you've never actually dealt with someone who's larger than you, you're gonna get crushed every single time. But if instead you always train as though you are the smaller person and don't factor in your strength, you will develop a series of techniques that will work against any opponent that you come across. And then if you happen to have that size and strength advantage, well, then you just add that to an already effective technique. So how do I train to fight someone larger than me if I'm already a large person? Because all my training partners are smaller than me. Well, first and foremost is that when I spar, I don't ever think that I'm sparring with the person in front of me. I don't think about it that I'm beating or fighting this 120 pound person. In my mind, I make them my weight are heavier. And then I respect everything that's happening as though they have that size and weight advantage. So for example, if I'm sparring with a light person and they punch me in the face, Maybe, because we probably aren't going that hard anyways, maybe I could just eat the punch and keep moving forward. 
but I don't because I know if a larger person got the exact same shot on me, I would have been done for. And so I have to respect the shot as though they are larger than me so that I can condition my brain, condition my mind to not accept being hit in that moment. My thought is if I couldn't overcome it on a larger person, I should never assume that I can overcome it. Same thing goes when we are doing grappling. There's a lot of instances where maybe because the person is so much smaller than me, maybe I could just pick them up and throw them, just like manhandle them like this, right? But if I couldn't do that to a larger person, then I shouldn't be practicing it at all because then I would just be practicing bad habits. I'm effectively training really, really hard to beat up someone smaller than me. And kind of that brings me to the last part of why your strength really shouldn't be factored in all that much while you're training. And that's, are you training to beat people up who are smaller than you? Like, are you in this fight for the sole purpose of picking on people and like being the bully? Like, I, I'm, not trying, I'm not trying to be a jerk when I say this, but like, why are you concerned with beating up people who are smaller than you? Why should that even matter? You should always assume that you're gonna be the weaker person in the fight just from a simple moral standpoint. If my mother tried to attack me, I would not need martial arts to stop her. I'm bigger than her. I could just hug her and stop her because she is small. <laughs> so, so like, 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 yeah, being big can be a great advantage in a fight, but you don't want to train as though you will have that advantage because the second someone is bigger than you, all of your techniques just cease to work. They just don't work anymore. At least that's the way I look at it. That's kind of my take on self-defense that I always think about self-defense as you're fighting someone bigger, stronger, and more powerful than you. Maybe I'm way off base here. Uh, what are your thoughts on this subject? Do you think you should incorporate full strength into every single technique that you do? Or do you think you should maybe back off and try to develop just pure unadulterated technique and then add your strength later when you need it? I'd love to know your guys' thoughts on it. There's a lot of times where people will comment on my videos having not actually watched the whole video. And so include the words uh, strong man in your response to this video so that I know you made it to the end. And of course, if you've made it to the end, you're clearly enjoying this content. So please be sure to click the thumbs up button, click the subscribe button and the bell button so that you can get notified anytime I release a new video. And of course, I teach self-defense here in Indianapolis. And so if you'd be interested in signing up for our school, all the information to do so is on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Fight on.